I get a lot of furniture requests and I genuinely love making pieces for everyone who asks. Now there might be a little bit of a backlog, but people come to expect that with custom made furniture. You have to be a pretty special person to jump in front of that waiting list. A sponsor isn't going to do it, money isn't going to do it, a fresh blueberry pie, while tempting, isn't going to do it either. But when my parents asked me for a new bookshelf, they got bumped to the front of the line. And the best part is they let me handle design, so I went nuts. Well, walnuts. And after breaking down the boards into some rough pieces, I need to clean up the rough edges. You likely know that I don't have a joiner, and recently I've been too lazy to ask the lumberyard to do it for me, so I just use the track saw to rip a straight line on each board. I can then run the straight edge against the fence of my table saw to create two perfectly parallel edges on the boards. And everything that you're seeing in this first part of the video is made from 3 quarter inch thick walnut. Let's take a quick look into the SketchUp model so you can see how this bookcase is going to come together. So here's a rendering of the finished bookcase. Now, I think walnut's pretty ugly, so I'm going to paint everything these bright pastel colors. Relax, I'm kidding. The colors are just to represent individual pieces. I'm going to start off by making the outside of the case. Now, in an ideal world, I could unfold the bookcase like this, and then make one giant panel and cut it into four pieces so that the grain would be perfectly wrapped around the bookcase. Now unfortunately that would require about 120 inch long boards and I wasn't able to find any that long. So I'm going to make one long panel and then a smaller one for the bottom since that won't be quite as noticeable. Back in the shop, I prep for gluing up those panels like I talked about. I like to use dominoes to make sure that the boards stay aligned well while the glue cures, but biscuits or dowels would works just fine. While I get the boards prepped for glue up, I want to remind you, as always, we have full step-by-step -step plans for this bookcase as well as the accompanying SketchUp file, available link down in the description below or at spencerdesignco.com. You'll find everything you need including step-by-step -step instructions, detailed diagrams, and helpful tips in full color on the 35-page PDF that's instantly downloadable. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, consider checking it out. Oh yeah, the other reason why I couldn't make that 120 inch long panel, it's a serious nightmare to clamp up. And after eating a serious lunch, I came back to scrape off some serious glue squeeze out and had some serious work to do. Luckily I've got a pretty serious collection of sandpaper from Serious Grit, the sponsor of today's video. I easily flattened the tiny ridge between the boards with their 80 grit disc and it looked basically brand new. I tackled the longer panel with the same disc and it still had tons of life left. And best of all, their hook and loop material is made from more expensive nylon blend which means no more discs randomly flying off my sander. With the boards cleaned up, I took them back to the table saw to trim them the final width. Now I like to utilize a feather board when doing these final cuts just to make sure that the edges are nice and crisp. With the final width dialed in, the next thing I need to start doing is cutting the oversized panels down to their final length. Now, this is the one time where I definitely admit having a miter saw would be helpful, but I use a track saw instead. Now, when working with hardwood, it's pretty common to have some knots or voids or cracks. And I realized that after cutting some of the pieces, I had some cracks down their center. So I just filled them up with a little bit of black CA glue. And to attach the outer panels to each other, I'm gonna make some rabbits, which require swapping out the standard blade with a dado stack. And one of our Patreon supporters, Trip Southern, was nice enough to give us this brand new dado stack. And I truly couldn't be luckier to have such an amazing community to support this channel. If you didn't know, my goal is to take this channel to the point where I can actually quit my full-time job. And if you'd like to support me in that pursuit, consider checking out all the rewards I have for you over on my Patreon page and see if it fits you. But as always, there's no pressure. So with that dado stack, you can't use the standard throat plate, so I made a quick one out of some MDF. And I want these rabbits to be 3 8 of an inch or half the thickness of the panel deep and they're actually going to be cut slightly wider than the joining panel at this point, so we can flush it up later. But while we're here in SketchUp, 
let's see what we need to tackle next. So the outside panels are finished, and so the next thing we need to do is make these interior panels. Since making panels is really nothing new, I want to take a quick second to let you know that we're also on Instagram at Spencely Design Co. That's where we post tons of behind the scenes content, giveaways, and even show you projects way before they make it here onto YouTube. So if that's something you're interested in, consider following us. With the oversized panel made for the interior, I needed to work on bringing it down to its final height. Now, the measurement in the plans will get you super close, but I always like to take multiple cuts and really sneak up on the perfect fit. I'd say that one's pretty good. I want this vertical panel to attach to the bottom panel, right about here, so I'm going to use this spacer piece that I cut to get the panel in the perfect spot. Now I can use the domino and the panel will attach exactly where I want to use it without any complicated measuring. But as always, you could use pocket holes, dowels, any other joinery method would work just fine here. All right, so we've knocked out all of these pieces so far, and now we just need to make these shelves. If all of this panel making seems like it's a lot of work, well, it is. But you could always make this exact same design out of some walnut veneered plywood. The center shelf needs to fit perfectly between the two vertical partitions. If it's too short, it'll pull the panels inward and they won't be square. If it's too large, it'll push the panels outward and it won't be square either. So this is another example of when you want to take multiple passes to sneak up on that perfect fit. I'll use that same spacer trick that I showed you earlier to set up the domino again to attach the middle shelf to the vertical panels. And my parents asked for the outer shelves to be adjustable, so I temporarily lined all the panels up and used some tape to mark out where I needed to drill all the shelf pin holes. And this Craig shelf pin jig made the process super easy. Just drill your first holes, insert the metal pin into a hole you drilled, and continue down the panel. And I tried to get some super satisfying shot of like removing all the tape perfectly, but that wasn't in the cards today. With the shelf pins drilled out, I then started gluing up the bookcase. I started off by attaching the fixed center shelf to the internal dividers, and then adding the top and bottom panels to that. Now if you notice something off here, then you've got a good eye. I intentionally made the rabbits on the top and bottom panels a little wider than they needed to be. That way I can use a flush trim bit on the router to get them to the perfect size. While I'm here, I also need to route a rabbit out of the back of the case to accept a back panel. Now I'm only putting a back panel in the middle, but you could definitely do a full back panel if you wish. Totally up to you. The rabbiting bit will leave rounded corners, so I just need to sand the corners of the panel round so that it fits perfectly. With the main cabinet all situated, I took some of the panels that I made earlier and started cutting them down to their final size. Now these will make up those adjustable shelves that go on each side. These are going to be sitting on shelf pins, so to keep them from moving, I routed a really small recess on the underside of each one. Now, let's get into what I think is the most interesting part, the base. I grabbed some 5 quarter walnut stock and broke it down into some rough lengths with the jigsaw, and to rough width with the table saw. 
These four oversized leg pieces need a 25 degree miter cut on them to join them to the upper part of the base. Now this might seem strange, but I'm actually making an oversized base and then I'll carve the final shape out of it. The lower leg pieces will get attached with more dominoes, but since they're angled, it's gonna be really tough to clamp them together. Now if you saved your cutoffs from making the 25 degree miter cut, you can use some masking tape and CA glue to make this glue up a little bit easier. Just apply masking tape to each piece, add a little bit of CA glue to one side and some activator to the other, and you've got a really secure bond and you can glue the pieces up perfectly. With the rough leg shape made, I needed to make a template to get the final shape. So I grabbed some scrap MDF and sketched out the leg shape from the drawing in the plans. I could then cut all the straight lines with the track saw, and later on could cut all of the curves with the jigsaw. Now, unless you're unbelievably talented, it'll probably leave the template pretty messy. So I had to do some quick cleanup to sand the template smooth. With the template smoothed out, I could lay it on top of my rough leg and transfer the outline of the shape. I grabbed the jigsaw once again to carefully cut the shape out, making sure to stay proud of the line that I just marked out. After attaching the template to the rough leg, I grab a templating bit from my palm router, which has a bearing that will ride along the MDF template, and then started transferring the shape to the leg. With the first pass made, I jumped over to the router table with a bigger bit and finished up the rest of the routing. So we just finished template routing the legs for the face. And a lot of people always ask, how big of a mess does it make template routing everything? Well, let's see. All right, so I literally have cleaned up nothing. As you can see, the camera is still there. That's not bad. Underneath is pretty dirty, even with that dust collection hose hooked up, but yeah, look at the floor. It is still an absolute mess. It goes everywhere, all the way up here. But look how good those legs look. With the routing finished, the last thing I needed to do was cut off all the excess. Now I used my track saw to cut all the extra material from the top and then use the table saw to get the legs perfectly parallel. One of the 
things that I've noticed when making the sweeping curves in furniture is that they tend to look more fluid with a really small round over on them. To me, the sharp edges just feel unfinished. I also need to make some stretchers to connect the two leg pieces together. Now, it really doesn't matter what these pieces look like, so I just grabbed some small scrap pieces that were created throughout the build. Honestly though, you could use completely different wood species and nobody would ever see it. I then connected the stretchers to the legs with some more dominoes and then mortised out some spots for figure eight fasteners. These swivel to allow the bookcase to expand and contract with the seasons. And after writing a quick poem, I applied a few coats of Gleam 2.0 from Toto Boat, and this bookcase was done. Introducing the Luna Bookcase. This might have been the most time consuming build I've ever done. There was constant downtime due to all the panels that needed to be glued up. But all that aside, it was a great learning experience to get more practice in with working with solid lumber. Sure, I could have used plywood and saved a substantial amount of time. But why wouldn't I use hardwood if I had the choice? See you on the next one. Alright, hold on. I can't take credit for that bad pun. I stole it from Sean Boyd.